Elon Musk asking a court to temporarily block OpenAI from becoming a for-profit entity. Calculated move from Musk, who has his own AI company in the works, XAI, uh, and uh, his timing couldn't be better. OpenAI has already caught heat. You need a scorecard on this, folks, with the <laughs> OpenAI and the XAI uh, for its potential pivot, with some questioning the company's intentions after claiming for years to have no goals beyond operating as a nonprofit artificial intelligence research firm. But Elon Musk may prove to be one tough opponent, given his role in the upcoming Trump administration, his connections there. Here to help us make sense of all that is Malo Santo, CEO, XIA, and CNBC's technology correspondent, Steve Kovac. Also with us is Nancy Tangler. X, welcome. It's good to see you again. What is going on here, and why is Musk involved in this? What is his stake here? Why does he oppose open AI going uh, into a for-profit status. Yeah, well, first, it's good to see you. Thank you for having me again. I think the core challenge here that we're seeing with this Elon Musk lawsuit is the fight over the ownership of who actually owns the IP that OpenAI created while it was a nonprofit. It's well known that Elon Musk bankrolled a lot of those initial investments and developments that he gave, uh, I believe it's $44 million in its first five years as a nonprofit. And by lending his name and his expertise, he was able to attract a number of industry partners and leading research scientists to come to the organization. I read through the 86-page lawsuit that was filed. And in there, he gives examples of, right before he separated from OpenAI's board of him vehemently denying wanting to turn into a for-profit structure simply because, hey, I bankrolled you guys for the first five years. Why would I now let you go be for-profit and then I don't have any ownership stake in what was created? It's, I think his quote was that he said he was giving away startup capital for free. Right. And so now as OpenAI has taken all of this intellectual capital that it's built and spread those assets across a number of for profit entities, the question comes into play as to who should own it. Should Musk have some type of controlling stake in the IP that was developed or not? And so we're seeing this play out in real time where uh, he just filed the injunction the other day to try to force a court right. to stop it transitioning. Now, the interesting thing is that the nonprofit structure that OpenAI has will still exist under their proposed restructuring, but the controlling governing body will turn into what's called a public benefit corporation, which will require them to both consider societal harms and profit needs in balance. And unironically, this is the same structure that Elon Musk has inside of XAI. This is also the same structure that uh, Anthropic has, which is uh, home to another major OpenAI competitor, Claude. And so the question becomes, is it really truly about the um, you know intellectual property and who should own it? Is this something petty? Is this something that is being played out? And I think we'll have to see what the court mm -hmm. decides. Well, Steve, what do you see it as X sees it, basically? I yeah. mean, it is very deep, involved, and gnarly. Yes, and the, well, let's look at the timing and it, of, of what's happening here and what happened on Friday. It, the, asking them to stop being a for-profit company. Last week, the Wall Street Journal reported that XAI is about to launch its first consumer product. XAI is way behind all these other AI companies, OpenAI and Anthropic. That, 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 that is Musk's about. company. This is Musk's company. And right now, you can't, unless you uh, subscribe to X, if you're a premium subscriber, pay however much it is a month, you do get access to it. But other than that, there's no real way for just people like you and me to access it. it sounds like that's going to change pretty soon. So it's going to be a direct competitor coming sooner than later to ChatGPT. And by the way, XAI is being operated like a for-profit company. So you can look at it one way, trying to kneecap a competitor, saying, hey, you guys had this original mission. By the way, I bankrolled much of your original mission. Uh, and here you are uh, going against that. Microsoft gets involved in here, too, because it's not just about this uh, abandoning the mission. It's also uh, um, uh, alleging uh, antitrust, uh, anti-competitive processes between these two companies because Microsoft has such a huge stake and gets early access to open AI technology. And the final bit here is, uh, Musk alleges that OpenAI is telling its investors, don't invest in anyone else. That includes XAI. So there's a huge fundraising race going on here as well. Right. I mean, again, Nancy, I, it, there's a, a tension here that has not yet been solved with a lot of these AI models, but gets to the business models and the profitability and the potential profitability for sources. So if you're Reddit, if you're a news organization, if you can license to these organizations, that's why the XAI thing with Twitter is so interesting. They have to get their information from somewhere. 
And it's one thing if you're OpenAI and you did it at first because you were a research institute and you just scraped it off of the internet. But now that everybody gets the game and now that you're a for-profit, you're going to have to pay to be able to continue to access all of that information. Or, or Kate Rogers has reported, or, or Kate Rooney has reported, you're going to other, or, or just try to generate it yourself by literally covering the news yourself or, or what have you. Yeah. Yeah, and I think Steve's right. I think this is a kneecapping event um, that, you know, because they're so far behind, uh, they, they, and that's open AI, <laughs> to your point earlier. They're Tyler. so far behind open AI. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, XAI, XAI is, is so far behind. <laughs>